they caused a lot of damage and we will respond uh, we will respond proportionally and we'll respond uh, in a place and time uh, and manner that we choose six years later in december of 2020 an even bigger hack was detected in software distributed by a company called solar winds that software was used by a large by large corporations and government departments to manage their it networks russian hackers have been prowling around thousands of government and private sector websites completely undetected for nine months so what lessons did we learn from that 2014 hack at sony uh, and did we fail to apply those lessons in 2020? Do we need to rethink our approach to cybersecurity going forward? Joining me from Northern Virginia is Senator Angus King, an independent from Maine and co-chair of the Cyberspace Solarium Commission, which was established in 2019 to make this country less vulnerable to cyber attacks. Senator King, welcome to On Point. Great to be with you, Kim. Important topic. And also with us from Palo Alto, California, is Nicole Perlroth. She covers cybersecurity and espionage for the New York Times and is a guest lecturer at Stanford University. Nicole, thank you for being with us as well. Thanks, Kim. It's a pleasure. So I want to begin, what do you think about that approach? And are we where we need to be when it comes to cybersecurity? Uh, there are some subtleties to it, but uh, the point is that uh, if they're sitting around at the Kremlin deciding whether or not to come after a piece of U.S. infrastructure, I want somebody at the table to say, gee, boss, I don't know if we should do this. Uh, the financial system, everybody's money is online. The whole, your bank account could disappear overnight. Uh, the electrical system uh, could go down. We learned in Texas what that means. Uh, water systems are vulnerable to, to cyber attacks. Uh, telecommunications, everything could go dark. So the, 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 the danger of this uh, cannot be overestimated. One of our recommendations that hasn't been implemented yet, we're working on this year, is a Assistant Secretary of State for cyber to lead and get engaged in the international efforts uh, to develop norms and standards so that if somebody uh, crosses the line, uh, they're going to they're going to find uh, they're going to be an international pariah. They're going to find sanctions uh, from all the countries. I want these hackers to not be able to go to Monte Carlo or Paris as well as New York mm -hmm. or Miami. We're moving into the Internet of Things where your microwave talks to your refrigerator and they talk to your car and everything is connected. And, and by the way, I want to mention an aspect of this that we haven't touched upon. We're talking about Russia and China and to some extent North Korea, perhaps Iran. But as the technology advances and our dependence upon our digital infrastructure increases, what the other thing that really worries me is non-state actors. Uh, is is smaller, you know, uh, uh, ISIS getting this capability or developing a, a cyber disruption cell uh, to sort of take over some of the techniques that the Russians have developed. Then you're in a place where, you know, how, how does deterrence work on a non-state actor? I mean, this is a, a very, uh, very complicated uh, problem uh, that we've, you know, we've got to address on all fronts. Uh, Deterrence is part of it, international standards is part of it, and uh, working on uh, literally protecting uh, our networks is, is the other thing. But they, I, as I said at the beginning, the most important thing is for the American people to realize we've got a problem. Uh, you know, they can take out the electric grid. The, the individuals have to be, uh, individual citizens have to be responsible for this, as well as the companies. And the other piece, of course, that we haven't touched upon is disinformation. Uh, which is a huge problem, uh, both within the country, but also coming from outside of the country. And education is the best answer for that. We have to be better consumers of information than know when people are trying to mislead us. And we have to be, you know, looking for a variety of sources and verifications of facts and those kinds of things. So we could we could do a whole program on disinformation. But uh, yes. I, I think one of the things that we have to do is build a, a really unprecedented level of trust and, and, and cooperation and coordination between the private sector and the public sector. One of our recommendations in the solarium is what we call a joint collaborative environment, a place where the private sector, with some protections, they have to be assured 
that they're not going to suffer some liability for sharing this information. But that's what's being negotiated and worked on in the Congress just right, literally right now. And uh, to establish a place where the private sector can report without fear of, of repercussions in real time, and then you can have a coordinated response. Uh, but as I say, the, it's, it's, and this is, a, this is a whole new way to think about conflict. We think about armies against armies, battleships mm -hmm. against battleships. In cyberspace, the, the attack surface is the private sector. It's the power grid, the, the telecommunications, the financial system. And so it requires a, a, a really a, a whole new way of thinking about conflict and how do you uh, coordinate your response. And that's, that's a, uh, we have to reimagine conflict is really what we're talking about. One side acts, the other side reacts, and the other side then has an equal and, and, and further reaction, and it, it spirals upwards from there. But one possibility is if the NSA sees suspicious activities abroad leading into American facilities, they can then report that to the FBI. The FBI does have the authority to investigate in the United States, uh, going through a warrant process, which is part of our Fourth Amendment protection, but that's one option. But the important point here is that this should be worldwide. We need a, a, a worldwide international Geneva Convention of Cyber. And our adversaries are now on notice that uh, we're not going to sit back and just take uh, these attacks one after another. So what do we do? Well, in Israel, uh, they have made a trade-off here. They've said, we will allow Israeli military defense to come into uh, corporate systems and domestic servers and monitor for uh, intrusions and block them if need be in real time. We don't want that here. We don't want the NSA inside company systems, particularly companies like Microsoft and Apple that have to answer to foreign customers. And we had those debates after the Snowden leaks and there's no appetite to invite the NSA into these systems. So what do we do? Well, what we're left with is a model where we need to partner, we being the U.S. government, needs to partner with the private sector to share information about active attacks and cyber threats in real time. But we certainly have the access to pull off a cyber attack that would create a real deterrent element to it. Uh, I agree with Nicole. The companies have to be more responsible. One of the things our commission suggested is a kind of underwriter's laboratory for, for cybersecurity. You know, you, when you buy a toaster, there's a little UL label that tells you it won't burn your house down. We need a similar, we're talking about a similar voluntary uh, cybersecurity label on your home router, on, on your uh, smart car. Uh, and I yeah. think that's a step in the right direction. Yep. Senator Angus King of Maine, co-chair of the Cyberspace Solarium Commission. Thank you so much for joining us today. Great to be with you. Thanks for the discussion. I really appreciate any time we can raise this point with the American people is important. Thank you. And Nicole Pearl-Roth is a cybersecurity reporter at the New York Times. Nicole, thank you so much. Thank you so much, both of you. It really is music to my ears that we're talking about these issues in such a nuanced way and that thank, really is thank you the first big step they caused a lot of damage